The NIST Cybersecurity Framework 2.0 is designed to help organizations of all sizes and sectors to manage and reduce their cybersecurity risks. Let's have a brief look at cybersecurity risk management to help you better understand how the CSF can support you in protecting your organization. Now, all organizations, whether they are large multinational corporations or small and medium sized businesses, face a broad range of risks. All organizations serve a distinct purpose, oftentimes captured in their mission and vision statements. They exist to serve their purpose and achieve their business objectives. For example, to generate revenue. Risk can be defined as the effect of uncertainty on objectives. When a risk threatens the achievement of those objectives, we refer to it as an enterprise risk. Now, there are many types of enterprise risks, including cybersecurity, privacy, legal, financial, operational, and reputational risks. To operate securely and achieve their mission, organizations need to identify, analyze, and respond to these risks systematically. As I mentioned in the beginning, the NIST Cybersecurity Framework, or CSF in short, was specifically designed to help organizations manage and reduce cybersecurity risks. Now, it's worth noting that cybersecurity and privacy risks often overlap. So implementing the CSF can also have a positive impact on privacy, even though that's not its primary focus. Now, risk is a term that we often hear and use in our daily lives. But do we really understand what it means and how it affects us? Now, let's start with the official definition of risk from ISO. It is defined as the effect of uncertainty on objectives. Now, that might sound abstract at first, but it's actually a very flexible and powerful concept. Think of it this way. Anytime we're working toward a goal, there's some level of uncertainty, something might go wrong, something unexpected could happen. That's what we call a risk. So in the end, it's about whether or not an organization is able to achieve their objectives. In our field, we take the general idea and apply it specifically to information assets. Cybersecurity risk is the potential that a threat will exploit a vulnerability in one of our information assets and as a result, cause harm to the organization. So a risk in practical terms is a potential event. It hasn't happened yet. But if it does, it could disrupt operations, damage reputation, cause legal trouble, or even worse. But risks don't just appear out of thin air. They originate from threat sources, which can be either adversarial or non-adversarial. Let's start with adversarial threats. These involve someone actively trying to cause harm, such as hackers, cyber criminals, insider threats, or even nation-state actors. They use tactics, techniques, and procedures, often referred to as TTPs, to breach security and exploit vulnerabilities. On the other side, we have non-adversarial threats. These aren't intentional, but they can still be just as damaging. Think of human error, like an employee sending a file to the wrong person, or technical failures, software bugs, and even natural disasters like floods or fires. Now, even though these threats aren't malicious, they can still exploit weaknesses in your systems and cause significant harm like data loss, service disruption, or legal consequences. Threat sources initiate threat events. An example could be a phishing email with a malicious attachment that installs malware when opened. In that case, the event is the installation of malware and it's a direct attempt to exploit a weakness in your system. The threat source could be an individual, a group, or even a nation state trying to distribute malware. That brings us to vulnerabilities, the weak points in our organization's defenses. Now, Vulnerabilities could be anything from outdated software, misconfigured systems, lack of training, or even missing policies. Threats exploit these vulnerabilities to compromise the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of our core cybersecurity objectives. Now, most vulnerabilities come from security controls that aren't applied correctly, whether that's by mistake or by choice. In general, we can find vulnerabilities in hardware components, software and applications, and networks. But vulnerabilities aren't just found in computer systems. They can also be in organizational structures like how well people within the organization communicate or the location of physical premises. They might also come from outside the organization like if the organization relies too much on certain suppliers or utilities. Now, a risk describes a potential future event, something that could happen. But once it does happen, it becomes a security event or an incident. At that point, the focus shifts to incident response and recovery, identifying the issue, taking corrective action, and restoring normal operations with minimal damage. So how do we stop adversaries and protect our systems? The answer lies in security controls. 
Controls are safeguards or countermeasures designed to manage risks, detect threats, respond to incidents, and ensure the CIA triad. Controls can be preventive, so stopping bad things from happening, detective, alerting when something suspicious occurs, or corrective, so helping you recover after an incident. Let's look at each of these. Preventive controls aim to reduce risk by stopping threats before they can cause harm. For example, CCTV cameras might discourage intruders just by being visible. Security baselines for IT systems hopefully ensure proper configuration, and policies and procedures define expected behavior and reduce the chance of human error. Now, all of these are designed to reduce vulnerabilities and deter attacks. Detective controls help you notice when something suspicious is happening. They don't stop the threat, but they give you a chance to react. An intrusion detection system, for example, might alert an admin about unusual network activity, giving the team time to investigate and respond. Now, corrective controls kick in after something goes wrong. They are all about limiting the damage and getting things back to normal. Good examples include data backups to restore lost information or system recovery plans to quickly bring systems back online. Now, having these in place ensures you can bounce back quickly when incidents occur. Of course, this is just a high-level introduction to cybersecurity risk management. If you'd like to go deeper, I've linked a few helpful resources to this lecture, so feel free to explore them at your own pace.